Okay, now um, let's uh, solve an example from the scratch where uh, we're being asked to design a sequential modulo 3 accumulator for two bit operands here. Uh, you know, the m m mod 3 adder is you get results either 0 uh, or 1 or 2 in binary form. If you get a result of 3, then you will end up having 0. That's it. That's the idea. So it means that how many, uh, I mean, how will my system work here? So as long as uh, you're getting, uh, uh, I mean, different inputs, uh, you're ending up in different outputs. That's the idea. So your stored sum is uh, within your state. That should be your state. That's the idea. And your inputs should be your again two bit numbers where you can get zero one or two as input and z1 and z2 uh, would be your uh, outputs at any given time now this is it this is the written description of the uh, question or the customer requirement mod 3 accumulator all right so how can this system work now let's try to figure out I will rely on more for this purpose so you start with zero and it will give you zero zero output at this state suppose that you get zero here it means that you're staying right here right as input and if you get uh, one for example what happens so you will go to another state namely B and you will give the output one right here for this purpose and uh, if you get another one if you're at B for example you will end up in C where you have one zero okay zero one and suppose that you're at C and you get zero one again and it means that you will return to right here right and for the remaining ones let's fill the uh, other uh, arcs in this in this manner so if you're at zero zero and you get one zero so you will end up right here so is that obvious so we're working on the state diagram right here and if you're at b and you get zero zero it means that you're still here and if you're at C and you get zero zero you're still here if you're at B and you get one zero it means that you get two you will end up right here and if you're at C and you get one zero again you will end up right here now it means that we have we have our state diagram here state diagram and in the first part of this question we will use the flip-flops for this purpose now from the state diagram we should go ahead and transfer this information to our state table all right so uh, then what we have here is the uh, state table like you will have for uh, y1 and y0 as your current state and x1 and x0 your inputs right here so it means that you can have a b c uh, um, okay and these states here that's it so and these will be your next states right here and that will be your z1 and z0 in the end which is dependent on your current state right here but let's use uh, let's rely on gray coding here which would make it more meaningful so i will put my states as 0 0 0 1 1 1 and 1 0 right here as states at this state we don't have it but we need to put it because uh, we have it as well so 
and these will be your uh, next states in this manner y uh, oops i'm sorry oh, y1 y0 y1 y0 1 y0 y1 y0 uh, for this purpose if you get 0 0 0 1 1 1 and 1 0 as inputs here x1 and x0 inputs here you will end up uh, in these so uh, let me fill the uh, okay if you're at 0 0 and you get 0 0 you stay here stay here and stay here for 0 0 stay, stay where you are in the next state for 0 0 input but what about 1 1 just think about it what about 1 1 state if you get 0 0 here does it matter where you end up in the next time you don't it, it doesn't matter so you put x right here great so if you're at 0 0 and you, you get 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 and again if you're at 1 1 you don't care that's it and if you're at uh, let's say if you get the input of 1 1 do you care about what happens no because we will never get this input or we don't care about it and if we're at 1 0 uh, I'm sorry if we get the input of 1 0 what happens so if you're at 0 0 you will end up in 1 0 if you're at 0 1 uh, it means that you it will be 1 plus 2 will give you 0 0 right okay and if you're at 2 getting an outer 2 will put you at 0 1 and these will be your uh, axis again and how about the outputs they're directly dependent on your inputs okay they will be right just the same and look at this so we will put them as 0 0 0 1 and 1 0 and uh, your this output should be uh, 1 1 or uh, okay so where you are is your output that's it it's pretty straightforward all right and i think uh, we can also put x right here as well i think that makes sense hopefully you don't care so uh, it means that i need to have two flip-flops for this purpose d1 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 and i need to have uh, d0 for the next one okay d0 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 for the next one and for uh, uh, z1 and uh, z2 again you need to have two outputs that's it for this one that will be your output okay so uh, your z1 is uh, they're they, they, they're purely di they're directly your z1 i mean let me write them your z1 is equal to uh, y1 so in this sense i also need to have one one here it is obvious because since you have there it should be like this and your z0 should be uh, y0 that's it and you don't need to minimize anything for this purpose so, so we have them already for the output since this is a more machine now let's uh, uh, I mean let's focus on the input equations for both of our D flip-flops right here namely D1 like it's dependent on your current state and inputs and your d0 again it is dependent on your current state and inputs so what you have here should be filled 
in the K map to be optimized. All right. So I copy all these directly. Uh, zero zero x one. Zero x one and zero one x zero. One zero and x x x x direct copy and this one is um, one zero x zero one zero x zero and for the other flip flop it is zero one x zero zero one x zero and for the other one it is one zero x zero zero x zero oops and uh, let me erase this okay object okay and uh, my last one is okay x x x x and finally this one is zero zero x one When I make the necessary uh, minimization here, optimization here, taking the largest rectangles as possible, like this, I think they're very nice. And if I have for the other one, it should be this one, and this one, and this one. All right, yeah, so it should be a uh, I think like this. So when we make the necessary minimization here, your D1 should be equal to, let's start with the largest one, which is Y0, X0 plus, and this one is Y1, X1 not, X0 not plus, and this one is y1 not y0 not x1 okay and for d0 that should be uh, start with the largest one which is y1 x1 right plus this one is y0 x1 not x0 not plus finally this one is y1 not y0 not and x0 all right so uh, this are the uh, these are the input equations equations for your next state and these are your output equations that's it so here you have your uh, written description specification of your uh, circuit and you go ahead and formulate it as a state diagram then you obtain the state table and then you get the output equations and the next state input equations right for what for the flip-flops wonderful and finally you can design the circuit like this you will have a one flip-flop here another one right here and these will be your outputs and you will have the combinational parts here as input equations and when you pack this up and provide them with a clock signal positive edge triggered clock signal then you will have your circuits and in the end you can also go ahead and verify it manually by trying many combinations or you can use a computer-aided design tool to simulate uh, your test cases. So this is all about the design with uh, the flip-flops. Okay, in the next parts, we will be dealing with design with other flip-flops. Okay, thank you for listening.